I have great honor in welcoming His Excellency Theodora Ngema Obiam, Vice President in charge of National Defense and Security of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea, and I invite him to address the assembly. Excellencies. Your Excellency, President of the 78th United Nations General Assembly Session, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government and Heads of Delegations, Your Excellency, Distinguished Secretary General, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, On behalf of His Excellency Obiang Gemon Basogwa, President of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea, I should like to begin by congratulating His Excellency Dennis Francis on his unanimous election as President of this 78th session of the General Assembly. And I extend those congratulations to the other members of the Bureau. Rest assured that you can count on the support and cooperation of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea during your presidency. We wish to extend our heartfelt solidarity to the Kingdom of Morocco and to the State of Libya following the tragedies which these two sister countries have recently experienced. Those tragedies have led to great loss of life and to massive destruction of infrastructure. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the theme of this 78th session of the General Assembly is quite rightly rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals towards peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. We do indeed welcome the relevance of this theme because it points at the very heart of the burning issues which the world is currently facing. It focuses inter alia on conflicts, on the increase in the number of armed groups, on the real threat of terrorism and mercenarism, on climate change, on the prospect of new health crises, and on the economic and financial crisis, as well as on the food crisis, which may well lead to famine in a number of countries. This is a decisive and crucial crossroads, and leaders of the world must find lasting, consensual, transformative, and sustainable solutions in order to tackle the multifaceted challenges which are impacting all of the continents of our planet. Mr. President, once again, we are here to denounce and to condemn interference by some countries and exploitation by some countries of our natural resources. This continues to be a major factor leading to underdevelopment, to conflicts and to instability. 
We are very concerned about the increasingly serious situation in the countries of the Sahel, as well as in other regions of the African continent, which has a very negative impact on the development of those countries. Africa should receive priority attention in support initiatives and in financing for development. Financing for development commitments must be implemented so that we can reach the goals of Agenda 2030 so that we leave no one behind and so that we can overcome all of the phenomena which hamper development in Africa. We are quite concerned at the chronic crises in Haiti. That country is currently besieged by gangs of criminals inflicting enormous damage on the population. Equatorial Guinea is therefore proposing the holding of a UN conference for Haiti in order to analyze this situation in depth and in order to find a sustainable and lasting solution. Equatorial Guinea will insist on the need to reform the UN system, including the Security Council, which today is involved in one of the greatest injustices, namely the failure to implement international law. The African continent continues to be a victim of the historic injustice of being the only continent without permanent representation in the Security Council, despite the fact that the vast majority of issues on the agenda of this decision-making body are issues of concern to Africa. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in this increasingly interdependent, interconnected world, we resoundingly reject the use of unilateral coercive measures which undermine the principles and purposes of the UN Charter and international law. We urge states to abstain from promoting these measures because they represent a serious obstacle to the development of states, particularly countries in development, developing countries. Once again, we raise our voice and we call for an immediate lifting of the commercial, economic, and financial embargo which has been imposed on the Republic of Cuba for several decades. This sister country deserves the opportunity to join the global community as a sovereign country. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, before concluding, I wish to report to you that the government of Equatorial Guinea has designed a strategic plan through 2035 for economic diversity. We would like our partners to join us in implementing this plan. We therefore extend an invitation to the business community of all friendly and sister countries to come and to invest in our attractive national market. We are living in a globalized world and therefore I hope that we will forge alliances of cooperation and 
solidarity through frank and inclusive dialogue so that we can resolve peacefully the current conflicts and inequalities as well as our differences. We appeal for the need to give more importance to international cooperation and multilateralism. They are very needed so that we can address the challenges facing all of humanity. Our determination to tackle pressing issues from climate change to peace to security and development is unwavering. I have no doubt that with a genuine spirit of solidarity, there is no difficulty we cannot overcome to ensure the well-being of our planet and of its peoples. Thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the Vice President in charge of National Defense and Security of the Republic of Equatorial Guinea for the statement just made, and I request the protocol to escort His Excellency.